can you hear me all right? Yes. Um, so yeah, this presentation, a friend challenged me. Um, you said the last time you presented on APID optimizers, um, nobody understood it. Can you make the presentation as simple as possible? This is my attempt. It's a little tale of APID optimizers. And it starts like any tale. Once upon a time in a not so far kingdom um, called uh, Transformer uh, Hugging Face Hub, there was a normal distribution and her little brother GPU. And their kingdom was ruled by a benevolent king, but sometimes the king got a little bit mad. And now that he ranted about parameters, he addressed the subjects and said, um, we did very well my subjects. We scaled and we scaled and we set new state of the art records. We even displaced those pesky humans from those leaderboards on some tasks, but we can do better. We can scale more. We can have trillions of parameters. No, quadrillions of parameters. And then a concerned citizen raises was, but, 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 but my king, current transformers are already so large. I tried to fine tune T5 on the higher cluster on eight GPUs and it was not enough. I didn't have enough memory. It still blew up. How are we gonna fine tune even larger models? And the king replied, um, steady there. I have a solution. 50% of the memory footprint of uh, our transformers is allocated to the optimizer states, the Atom 1 and Atom 2 buffer. If we reduce this memory to 8 bits, we can save uh, about 40% of memory. And so with this solution, um, he tasked um, the normal distribution GPU to come up with to building uh, 8 bit optimizers. And the little GPU was nervous. Uh, going from 16-bit to 8-bit reduces the possible values from 65,000 to just 256. And we already know that 16-bit optimizers are pretty unstable and hard to deal with. How do we do that? Um, calm down, my little brother, said the normal distribution. Uh, we just need to find a good quantization method that is both stable for training and also precise in quantization error. And the little, little GPU asked, what is quantization? And, her big sister, and his big sister said, um, it's a little bit like histogram binning. If you have a tensor, it usually represents a normal distribution. And uh, if you have 8-bit quantization, you have 256 different bins. And in this example, we have 16 bins, which is equivalent to 4-bit quantization. And so what you do is you slice up the normal distribution and bins with equal width. And now all the values that are in the range of a bin get quantized to the middle value of that bin. And so with that, we can reduce the entire distribution just to 16 different values. And so with that, um, the little GPU started quantizing uh, the tensors of the local village of transformer layer 16. And suddenly he exclaimed, oh no, evil. Sister, come quick, there's some evil here. There's an evil outlier that's destroying our quantization. And the sister looked at the situation and said, um, yes, that, that, that can happen with us normal distributions. We have infinite charm. That means it infinite minus infinity and plus infinity. And sometimes that attracts outliers. And so as we can see, most of the bins are between the outlier and the start of the distribution. And we have very few bins for the uh, uh, normal distribution itself. That makes uh, for a very high quantization error. But the sister had a solution in mind that um, the little GPU was very, uh, will be very fond of. So I proposed this set the system and we slice the tensor into small pieces, into small blocks. Each block has about 2000 values. And so with that, we can isolate the outlier into one block and all the other blocks are there just fine. And we have a good quantization there. Uh, another side effect is with this quantization, the largest values are always 100% precise. And the largest values are usually the most important values in uh, optimizers. And so another side effect that you will like very much, my little brother, is that um, with this, all the quantization is independent. You can process all the quantizations independently on each of your cores, and it's much faster. And so the system went a little bit further. I think we can do better. If you look at this distribution, most of the values are in the middle, but we use the same bin widths for, for, for all the range. That seems kind of wrong. 
Uh, shall we not use more uh, bins in the middle where there are more values to get better uh, quantization precision? And so um, the problem, uh, the, the, the normal distribution looked at the problem and, and uh, looked at normal 8-bit data types. And so you have usually one bit that is assigned to the sign. And then you have some bits for the exponent, which is a power of 10, and some bits for the fraction. And now you need to make a choice. If you have too many bits for the exponent and too few for the fraction, you can approximate small numbers, but not large numbers. And if you have the opposite, if you have uh, just, as, for example, a single bit for the exponent, you, you are good for large numbers, but you have a very poor precision for small numbers. So how, how can we have both a good precision for large numbers and a good position for the small numbers that are more common. And so the normal distribution came up with dynamic quantization, which is an extension of dynamic tree quantization. And so it still uses one bit for the sign, but now it uses the first zero bits for an exponent and it has then an indicator bit, which um, uh, shows, um, which basically indicates that the next bits are reserved for the fraction. And so by sliding the indicator bit left and right, we can basically change the exponent um, and make it larger and smaller. And so each number can have um, a different exponent. And with that, we can both approximate very large numbers, but also very small numbers. And so with this quantization, um, the GPU got to work and quantized uh, again the tensors. And um, um, the the, the GPU found uh, another problem. It was um, uh, so some evil instability in the training. And uh, so the normal distribution looked at this problem and quickly realized it's the embedding layer. The gradients in the embedding layer are very variable. It has to do with that we use uh, different frequencies. We have different frequencies for different tokens and that introduces a lot of uh, variance. And this variance leads to a lot of stability instability. And so she came up with a, a stable embedding layer recipe. And this stable embedding la layer recipe uses 32-bit optimizers instead of 8-bit optimizers. That's the only layer that has 32-bit optimizers in the transformer. And it uses Xavier initialization, which uses a uniform distribution, so it has less variance. And it uses a layer norm directly after the embedding layer. And so with this re recipe, they could put it all together, um, the 8-bit optimizers. And so it works like this. You first start with your 8-bit optimizer states um, initialized at zero. Then you dequantize them to 32-bit, do your update as normal. And once you have your update, um, you uh, quantize it again to 8-bit for storage. And so with that, we have the entire recipe for 8-bit optimizers. And so um, as you're finishing it, this uh, um, a recipe for APIT optimizers, a servant from the king came. And um, the servant said, I was sent from the king um, to present you the experimental requirements. Um, first, you need to test your APIT optimizer on common public benchmarks. And um, the requirement is that you only replace the APIT optimizer with, uh, with uh, a, your APIT optimizers. No other changes, no funny business. No hyperparameter changes. You can add your stable embedding layer. Uh, that is all. Uh, au revoir. And so now they had their experimental setup. And in a far kingdom, a, a kingdom far, far away, uh, in the kingdom of Google, uh, there was a queen um, who was born there and now led the optimizer department, the queen out of factor. And through her magic mirror, she um, um, could see the re experimental requirements and she also ran on the setup. And so um, what, what is Adder Factor? It's very similar to Adam, where you have an estimate uh, of the mean and you divide it by an estimate of the variance over time of the gradient. But an Adder Factor, what you do is you factorize the variance through an estimation of um, this state. Um, and you have a row and a column, you do an outer product, this is an estimate of the variance, and then you divide it by the mean of the gradient. And that's how Adder Factor works. And so Queen Adder Factor every morning, um, she asks the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the bullest of them all? 
And um, the mirror replied, it is you, my queen. Um, you are the boldest. You are the boldest both on glue and on large scale language modeling too. Uh, and the queen responded, what? And what about uh, training time? What about memory saved? What about all these other tasks? And the mirror responded, um, I'm sorry, my dear queen. Um, there are new optimizers in town, 8-bit Atom and 8-bit Momentum, and they are far bolder than you are. They're the boldest in memory saved on all tasks, and they're the boldest in training time too. And uh, they even match you on uh, glue. And so um, the queen was very unhappy, but somebody else who was very happy was a concerned citizen. The concerned citizen could now train these large models that couldn't be trained before uh, on a small GPU. And um, he could even train larger models that didn't fit before with 8-bit Atom. So um, the normal distribution in the GPU presented the solution to the king and the king said, I've been fooled before by state-of-the-art results. How can you prove to me that if I use it this time, it actually works? And so the little GP was very nervous, but um, his big sister had his back. She presented an analysis. And so she presented to the king, look, my king, here's an ablation analysis. We can show that um, if we don't use dynamic quantization, blockwise quantization, or the stable embedding layer, we either get unstable training or we get poor perplexity. So all of these components are required. Furthermore, we show that um, if we compare different hyperparameters of our optimizer 32-bit atom, that the variance is basically exactly the same. In blue, you can see here 8-bit atom perplexities. And uh, in orange, you see the 32-bit uh, atom perplexities. And as you can see, they follow sort of the same curve, the same line. And so, with that, it's clear that our uh, optimizers do not need any further hyperparameter tuning. With that, the king was satisfied and henceforth they scaled happily every author.